one of the great race hustlers of our day in America is a man who calls himself Ibram X. Kendi, partly to give himself a sort of Malcolm X vibe. And um, he wrote a book called uh, How to Be an Anti-Racist, uh, which is a very, very popular book in America. It's flooded everywhere. Uh, there's also a very slightly less grown-up version called Anti-Racist Baby, uh, which he explains, among other things, for two-year-olds, that you should talk to your two-year-olds about the fact that policies, not people, are the problem. I don't know if you've ever met a two-year-old, but they very rarely talk policy issues, in my view, my experience. Um, anyhow, Ibram X. Kendi, as he calls himself, says completely openly in How to Be an Anti-Racist, and I quoted in the book, he says uh, uh, the answer to past um, uh, prejudice is, is present prejudice. The answer to past inequalities is present inequalities. You must, you, must, you must rectify historic wrongs by committing wrongs in the present. Is, is, is his message. What's One, wrong with that? What's wrong with that message? <laughs> well, um, first of all, I mean, it's, uh, you punish people who look like people who did a bad thing in the past on behalf of people who look like people to whom a bad thing was done. You're not even dealing with victim and uh, and oppressor. You're 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 dealing with people who look like perpetrators of the past and people who look like victims of the past. So that's the first thing. Second thing is it's not going to work. And I'll tell you one reason why it's not going to work in particular, which is that um, that, that this would be very hard to do if you're dealing with a minority group. I, I think if you said to any minority, you're you're really scummy and worthless, and historically you're the only people who've ever done anything wrong, and no one else has, and you know, so on. And you should think badly of yourself, and you should be locked in this bad identity forever and never get out of it. I think if you did that to a minority group, it'd be unlikely you could persuade them into this mindset. Try doing that with a majority group. I think you're doomed to failure. I hope they're doomed to failure. I think they're pretty confident they're doomed to failure. Um, I don't think it'll it'll work. But uh, it seems like it's being pretty widely accepted at the moment. There doesn't yes. seem to be a massive amount of pushback. That's right. Um, I certainly get, you know, when, when you were using examples earlier on of flipping the language round to talk about black rage or black yeah. tears or uh, blackness that you can't get rid of, mm. that makes me cringe inside in a way that whiteness doesn't because I feel like it's I've just become so used to hearing that yeah, of course terminology used that I, I, I don't think twice about it. Yeah, well, I mean, um, uh, in the early 2000s, the uh, filmmaker Michael Moore wrote a book called Stupid White Men, which I reference in my book. I remember it very well. I remember thinking even then, 2000 or so, ooh, I'm not sure that Michael Moore could write a book called Stupid Black Men, uh, where there's a chapter in his book called uh, Blame Whitey. I wouldn't have thought you could do the opposite as a chapter if Mr. Moore. Uh, he he says in that book, um, white, if, show me any problem in the world and I can point you to white people being behind it. Uh, Mr. Moore has not seen very much of the world if he thinks that. What's happening, people? If you enjoyed that, then press here for the full unedited episode. And don't forget to subscribe. Peace.